but we are actually ruled by this ideology now which is which you can see our concept of haya is based on secular thought our concept of death is based on secular thought most people will tell you and we have a doctor here they are more they are more knowledgeable about the medical terminologies relating to terminal illness than any concept of the ruh how the ruh is removed from the body what is the process the conceptual ideas behind how the ruh sits inside our our bodies this is this is the fundamental pillar of islam if if you do not if you do not understand if you do not understand this thing if you are governed by this secular thought by which haya you measure your haya by which you measure your life and death then how can you be good muslims second and hand and third hand smoking but are oblivious to the second hand and third hand effects of secular thought on a muslim mind how are what is wrong with you guys am i speaking tell me if i'm aren't we so obsessed with you know cigarette smoking now in the society see how many laws and uh, you know things have been you know enforced just because to prevent people from you know second hand and third hand smoking and we muslims we are thinking that because i am doing the salah i am not watching the movie i am good what is wrong with us secular you know we have gone through all the secular things then the point where we left off i will just jump to that and you know we can alhamdulillah jazakallah so anyway so this was these are the may and i'm not exaggerating in in here slide 185 186 and 187 these are about Beautiful. Eight, 85% <coughs> sorry 90% of all metaphysical thought throughout history wow and i'm not exaggerating this a little bit now we have already gone through all these things so you know i've given you introduction into what is uh, what is you know these thoughts are and then we went through introduction of what is monism versus dualism and i give you an introduction on monopsychism and panpsychism and now the next step will be to go into each one of them now what is my what's how we are going to do it uh, let me present it to you my first and foremost thinking uh, let me give you a thesis statement of what we are trying to demonstrate here we are trying to demonstrate here is all the thoughts <coughs> that all modern thoughts are no more than rehashing of all the old thoughts that have existed. We got that? Can you say that? New label. So all modern thoughts are new labels for old ideas. Got that? Mm -hmm. This is my thesis statement. You can disagree with it. But I'm going to show you and then you can disagree with it. Okay. In that regard, the first case example that we took was the, a label by Stephen Hawking called Model Dependent Realism. This is the philosophy that he espoused in his book called The Grand Design just before he, you know, a few years before he departed from this world. Okay. And now uh, we have already done this and I have, sh we have shown, not I have shown, we have shown that model dependent realism is this. This is what he's promoting. He's promoting instrumentalism plus pragmatism plus ontological pr uh, pluralism, which is modern, the modern incarnations of what? Realism, skepticism and trivialism. These are, if you look, if you have seen, if you remember slide 185, these are the ancient thoughts that were there. So let's go through one, each one of these uh, 
and see how how ancient thoughts influence modern this thing this is a tree of porphyry this is tree of, this is the philosophy of aristotle this is how he divided substance you know reality based on this thing this is how he did it he said there's a substance which is material which is immaterial there's a body there's a spirit and so on and so forth this is the basis of modern taxonomy we have a doctor here he will tell you that's how this is this whole idea is now taken into and placed into modern taxonomical thought biological classification of living things so Im so imagine jumping from metaphysical thought to biology and medicine this is the connection that we don't see Muslims also have divisions of these things, but that's, that is based on a different viewpoint. So let's, the, for the first one is, the first thought that we have here is realism. What is realism? Realism is basically the philosophical idea that our, see here, right here, do you have the laser pointer here? So, so this this one here, this is your mind, right? Which exists. Where it exists, that's a different topic altogether. A mind exists. Where it exists, that's a different thing. And you have your senses. And there's a reality outside. How does the mind know the real external reality? Remember? This is this is realism is external reality, right? So the idea behind realism is and this is I'm just going to give you one introduction and I'm going to go into the details on this thing. It says it is through your five or now 32 senses that you perceive reality. So anything that you cannot perceive through your senses is not real. It's not real. It's not part of your reality. I think that is sufficient for realism. I don't. We are not going to go into uh, undergrad cl class of philosophy here. Okay. What is idealism? In contrast to realism, we have idealism. What is idealism? Idealism says this is your this is your mind, right? And this is your reality. Okay. How do you perceive your reality? Reality. It says through an abstract idea that exists within your minds. You got that? Mindset. Your own, no, mindset is a different thing. Your mind has some preconceived, inbuilt ideas, right? And through that, so it in idealism, your idea about reality might differ from my idea of reality. Theoretically speaking, hmm. though it doesn't, that will become a different topic altogether. We will see that together. So now, how does how does so here is idealism. Now the one of the understand this is the biggest. If you want to understand secularism, you really need to understand what is idealism and realism. Realism, see I see what is idealism. Ideas are real. Okay, so the ideas are not any abstract thing. They are real concrete things. Mm -hmm. Values are absolute. Man is a supreme creation. God is the source of all knowledge. You see the, those two things at the bottom, man is supreme creation. God is the source of all knowledge. They have been relegated now. Why? We will see. The difference between realism and idealism is this. And this is the core, whole aspect of the realism. Everything is, if you are realist, uh, sorry, if, yes, if you are realist, your source of knowledge will be what? Guess, anybody's guess? Your source of knowledge will be what? Five the senses. Knowledge acquired through your senses. And it's called what? Remember, we have gone through this. Empirical. Empirical. Your epistemical knowledge will be empirical. That's your primary means of knowledge. It is through that that you are going to weigh the whole world. That would be your criterion. That would be your furkan for your weighing the world around you. Anything that does not meet this criteria of 
uh, of empirical standard will be relegated, outdated, or, you know, rejected. That is what is a realist. Principles, liberalism, utilitarianism, all are taking their roots from being a realist. You see what I'm saying? On contrast, what is what is Ideal. idealist? Idealists believe that there is a criteria, there is an idea that is absolute against which we should, you know, subjugate ourselves. Okay? And look at one interesting thing here. Let me point out to this thing. You know where these things I'm picking up from? Object-oriented software engineering, engineering using UML. It's, this is like really... <laughs> <laughs> surprising of all the books that I consulted the best where I could get a concise information for this presentation was this book how many lamp brothers I'm my question pointing this out is how many of us who are studying computer science software engineering computer engineer relate th these ideas to what we are doing this is the whole problem this is the whole problem. So, another problem with idealism is that reality is an illusion. Because everybody's idealism, see, re realist think there's a, something real, this table is real, right? An idealist, your table and my table might differ in my head, right? Mm -hmm. So, there's, there's, a whole, whole, there's a whole branch of things that branch out of this small, you know, thinking these small statements so in reality what happens in reality what happens is nobody is a pure idealist and nobody is a pure realist what you have is a you know a line where people fluctuate between ideas sometimes this sometimes that for the same idea sometime later a philosopher will change today he is a realist on you know position a 10 years later he changes because why his experience changes. So let me ask you this. What, the world view point of a Muslim, Wallahi I'm telling you, Haya and the concept of death is so different. Unless you don't understand it, you cannot understand Iman. Here, so let's continue with our theme here. The debate between whether reality is, whether you, you are a realist or whether you are an idealist is a very pivotal part of modern secular thought. It has shaped many, many, you know, ideas, laws, laws that have come about. Education, curriculum have been set upon these very ideas. And I, we will demonstrate this, you know, uh, just in a few minutes here. So Plato, just to let you know, Plato was an idealist, while his people, his student, Aristotle, you know, Aflatun was an idealist, so for the Urdu speakers, and Aristotle, I don't know what's called Aristotle, Aristotle was a realist. And remember, Ibn Rushd, which we will see down the road, was a mixture of Plato and Aristotle, but more Aristotle. I, I cannot show you this slide because I have to go back. I don't know what slide what slide it is on. Out of metaphysical ideas comes epistemological ideas. Out of epistemological ideas come moral ideas, and out of moral ideas come political ideas. This is how, this is the flow. Metaphysical idea, epistemological ideas, right? Then you have uh, the. Moral, philo moral ideas, procedural, and then, and then finally you have political ideas. 
It is not. I, honestly, it is not. The reason why we are not able to... Honestly, when I started this stuff, I used to think these things were very arcane and jargon. Yeah. The only reason why I, I was able to study this, and I'm not making this up, is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I wanted to understand the Quran. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about something, I want to understand what is the man-made concept against what shaitan has delivered to the dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has delivered the Quran to us, right? He has talked about reality, haq, the ultimate reality. He has talked about the source of knowledge. What is the source of knowledge in Islam? Quran. 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 That's, that's the manifestation, but what is the source? Wahi. 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 Now, if you reject Wahi, what do you replace that with? You know, there's no vacuum in history, in, in, in nature. Realism, your senses. Either realism, idealism, or whatever ism that you see. Yeah. Is in two places, I mean, is there's a lot of places where it is played out, but two places that I really want you guys to pay attention to is education and international relation. I haven't done, I haven't done a you know, like a full blown, there's a, a if you want a full blown presentation of the realist and idealist position in education, we can do that, but for, for just now, what is is that there are two, two ways curriculums are set up. Do you understand that? Two ways modern curriculums are set up. Either they are set up in an idealistic fashion or in a realism fashion. Okay? If you are going to... The doctrine of education is going to be... If it is going to be realist, then it will be a materialistic educational curriculum. Emphasizing on materialism. And the materialistic interpretation materialistic interpretation of history so for example let me give you an example let me give you an example how this this plays out if your education is talking about let's say an event in history okay i pay attention to this carefully if i do something and if you are a realist how will you interpret that event like, you say, why did Brother Adnan do this? If you are a realist, you will say, you know, you will take one of these three positions. What is one of these three positions? Either he did it for political gain, he did it for material gain, economic, you know, whatever, energy, resources, or he, what is the third one? What is the third one? Anyone? Third? Social gain, social status. No, we already That's done. We did socio-political in the first one. What's an interest? The second one was what? Economic. Mm -hmm. Right? What's the third one? No. Political Sexual. Sexual? Yeah. I like a woman that I go and conquer a territory. Pleasure. Pleasure. That's what Freud is all about. He has interpreted the whole history of mankind based on the premise that everything is driven by sexual desire. You got that? And actually, you see, <laughs> this hadith was actually, see, this is nothing different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Sahih Bukhari starts with that. What does it start with? In the amalul bil niya. And, in, and what is the next one? If somebody's hijra is done for this, it's for that. It's done for a woman, it's for that. It's there. All you have to do is read it properly. What Freud is doing, in that is taking that hadith and just taking the last part of the hadith and using his his ignorance senses to misguide people. That's all he's doing. He's not doing anything more. Shaitan comes to him. He takes the last part of the hadith and he says, "This is the driving force." If you are an idealist and I do something, what will you concentrate upon? The idea behind which I am doing that. So it could be. It could be anything. It could be my belief in, you know, religion, you know, any metaphysical value that I have attached to myself and therefore I am 
doing that. For instance, let me give you a real example in the modern world. Iraq war happened, right? Now, the Iraq war, why did it happen? There are multiple, there are multiple you know, scenarios. One of the scenarios is they went for oil, which is economic, correct? That is the realist international viewpoint. What's the other one? Political. Again, it could be, it depends on whether it is a realist position or an idealist position. The other one is what? Somebody, like, what did George Bush say? George, George Bush said, God spoke to me. Yes? If that, was, if that is true, I'm not debating that. If that is true, and if that is the motivation against which he has, you know, sanctioned that action, then that's an idealist position. You see what you see understand what I'm trying to say here? These are not difficult things. So once you understand from where people are coming from, then you can you can take corrective actions. But most of the time things are you know different. We do not know what was the reality of behind war. That's no no reality is not just oil. There is oil involved in it, but the reality is a little bit different. Because Saddam Hussein. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One second, one second, well, brother, 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 brother. One second, one second, one second. We are not going to. We, we will not go into the. De we are not no, discussing I'm not, the Iraq war. Debating, I'm saying. Not debating. No, no, no. Just brother, let's take it Saddam offline. Saddam Hussein said, "I'm gonna sell the oil in Europe." That's it. I mean, no, I don't want to debate. Okay, the, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm that's gonna fine. Sell oil okay. in Europe. Okay, that's fine. That's so the reason before, we before you go ahead. Brothers, uh, anybody don't understand this because uh, whatever he's building is building on this. We totally understand what, what, is, what this is. The second, second one is your sources of knowledge. What you believe that this knowledge is not going to be able to do it. It's very important. For example, we have a person who has a person who is the main source. I prefer my rationality over Wahi. I mean, this is different approach. It's total. It's a total. It's total. It's total. So, metaphysically, you have to say that 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 you have to say The three questions here are where did we come from? What's our purpose here and where we are going? When I so on that note, give me one minute, then you continue here. On that note, very important note, I made a mental note to start after the Surah Manafikun, this thing, but I forgot about it. So let me explain this thing. Muslims today are totally confused about progress. They confuse progress with these three technological growth. I didn't say I didn't say progress. Mind you, I said growth with these three questions. Okay. Let's focus on this. Let's focus on this. Let's focus on तो वो जो सारी सोचे हैं वो बनी किस पर हैं तो वो पहली चीज है मेटाफिजिकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग उसकी वो क्या समझता है इस कायनात के बारे में कहां से शुरू हुई मकसद क्या है जिंदगी में यहां पर उसकी मेटाफिजिकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग क्या है वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड अब हमने दावत दे चुके हैं वो दावा कर हमने इस्लाम की तरफ बुलाना है ये बड़ी बुनियादी चीजें समझ में आपको समझना होगा अपना अपना क्लाइंट ये अपना जो है जिसको आप दावत दे रहे हैं वो किस माइंडसेट से ये जरूरी है दूसरी चीज समझनी जरूरी है कि ये रैशनलिटी को सुपीरियर रखता है किस चीज को सुपीरियर रखता है कौन से एपिस्टेमोलॉजिकल सोर्सेस पर ये बिलीव करता है बिलीव प्लीज पॉइंट टू बी नोटेड तीसरा फिर उन्होंने बोला उन्होंने कहा मोरालिटी मोरालिटी आ ही नहीं सकती अगर आपकी पिछली दो चीजें वहीं से तो आएगी एग्जैक्टली आपकी मेटाफिजिकल चीज तो आपको बिलीव करवाएगी कि भाई कौन से epistemological source is superior फिर उसके बाद आप moral law अपना कहां moral compass अपना किस चीज पर बेस करेंगे अगर ये दो चीजें नहीं है 
आपके नजर में दुनिया एक गाय के सीन पे रखी हुई है या राम की लीला है तो आपके पेस्टोलॉजिकल सोर्सेज भी उसी से मुतासर हो जाएंगी और आपकी मोरालिटी भी उसी से मुतासर हो एंड योर पॉलिटिकल थिंग वुड बी बेस्ड ऑन ऑल दैट पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम आप आगे बनाएंगे उस चीज पे बेस करेगा बल्कि आपकी पूरी जिंदगी फिर इस पे बेस करेगी इसके कंपैटिबल इस्लाम क्या देता है इस्लाम बताता है हकीकत दुनिया की कायनात की क्या सो मेटाफिजिकल इज एक्चुअली आखिर आखिर कह लें अब अबद कह लें या अजल कह लें अल्लाह ने ये सारा मामला क्यों बनाया है ये खेल तमाशा क्यों बर्बाद किया है दूसरा सोर्स पे चले जाएं तो सुपीरियर सोर्स क्या है वही वही ये वही मानियात है जिसपे मुसलमान की सोच बिल्डअप होती है और फिर आगे आ जाता है मोरल कंपस आपका क्या है सुनना फिर आप पोलिटिकल सिस्टम किस पे बनाएंगे किसी के पर बनाएंगे बुनियादी खराब